my name is Susanna Zarayski and I have decided to make this phone call with Fasulia and Jana because I would like to discuss why we see so few female polyglots on the internet talking about how they learn languages and why they're learning languages and how they use their languages for their daily lives. And I speak seven languages. I was born in the former Soviet Union and I came to the United States as a child. I speak Russian, English, French, Spanish, Italian, Portuguese, and Bosnian or Serbo Croatian. And I've written a book called Languages Music to encourage people to use music in the media to learn languages. And I'm very passionate about having women learn languages. So uh, Fasulia, maybe you could introduce yourself and tell us about your language background. Okay. Um, yes, my uh, nickname is Fasulia and I'm known on the internet under this name. And um, I've been learning languages um, my whole life long. Uh, I started learning languages in school, then I continued at university, and now I do language courses at the adult ed education center combined with self-study of languages. I speak seven languages. Um, my native language is German. I speak Dutch, English, Italian, French, Spanish, and Esperanto, and I'm now busy studying another language which is Danish. Uh, I've been studying Danish for two years now and I also would like to encourage other women, girls um, to learn languages and uh, especially to learn many languages if they are uh, motivated and uh, to do so. Excellent, thank you. And um... Jana? <laughs> yeah, Jana. Jana, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> How about you? Um, okay, so my name is Jana Fadness. I'm originally from Washington State in the U.S., and I was born and raised there, uh, speaking only English. But um, I was always interested in other languages as well. And I started to learn Japanese uh, when I was 13 years old. Um, I just started learning it on my own because I thought it was interesting. And um, then throughout my life, I continued um, to study other languages. Like I took French in school. I took some Spanish. Um, when I got to university, I continued to study Japanese and I studied Chinese as well. And uh, then pretty much as soon as I got opportunity, I like, went and lived in other countries. And so um, I lived for a year in Taiwan and three years in Japan um, as a teacher of English as a foreign language. And right now, I'm actually living in France. Um, I'm living with a French host family as an au pair, which is like a nanny. And um, yeah, I just love languages. And I also want to encourage other people, and especially girls and women, um, to learn foreign languages. Excellent. All right. Thank mm -hmm. you. So I'll start with the first question. Um, how can we encourage more females to present themselves on the internet to inspire other people to learn languages? Uh, would either of you like to start? Yeah, yes, for example, uh, if, if we are present on the internet and other uh, females can uh, uh, listen to our uh, uh, videos or read our blogs or uh, and and if we do networking among other people so if we we do uh, we contact other females and have have internet contact and uh, then we we get to know each other and they might think oh oh I would also like to be more present on the internet so this could encourage other people excellent thank you Fasulia how about you? Um, yeah, I agree. And um, I think we also need to um, I don't really talk about the benefits of like presenting yourself on the internet. Um, because, I don't know, I personally have found that um, like it's actually helped me to learn languages, to be public about it. Um, because, you know, different people have contacted me and I've been able to, like, network with other people um, who are interested in language learning and get more ideas. And I've gotten, like, so much positive encouragement from people, you know. Um, if I, like, post a video of myself speaking another language, I get all kinds of feedback uh, from native speakers, you know, who give me um, encouragement and constructive criticism. And I think, I don't know, maybe a lot of people are like kind of afraid or you know they're too shy um 
to present themselves on the internet, but really it's once you do it, there are a lot of benefits to it. And so um, I think if we could, you know, really show people what a good thing it is, uh, maybe more people would be willing to do it. I think that's a great point that both of you made because if it weren't for having found both of you through Twitter and, and Facebook and, and um, YouTube, I wouldn't know of your existence. So that's how we're networking, obviously. And I think about what you were saying about the benefits that I think that one of the things that maybe keeps women from showing their languages on the internet is they think they might be bragging. And I really think that if we talk about how the languages benefit us in our lives, whether we were able to get a job because we spoke a certain language or we were able to travel in a place of the, of the world where we would not have been able to go had we not known the language, or if we were able to um, have a friendship that we could only have in a certain language that will bring, that will make it obvious to people about what the utility is of languages and they might be more open to discuss how languages have benefited them in their daily lives. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I think it's really not, like for me, it's really not about bragging. Like, yeah. you know, I'm not trying to show myself off. Um, it's actually more about, you know, I'm trying to show people like I'm just an average person, you know, but I've learned languages and it's brought like all these positive things into my life. I think you're right. You're right. It, it, it is about showing the positive stuff. And, and the fact that you specify that you grew up in a monolingual family makes mm -hmm. people realize, wow, I didn't have to be from a bilingual family. I didn't have to be from a certain part in Switzerland where, you know, I learned four languages when I'm a kid or something like that. It gives people more inspiration that they can do it. Right. How about the next question? What are the challenges that women face with languages that men might not have? Um, I think in my instance, one of the challenges is with, with women and languages is that sometimes when women want to practice a language, and I know this happened when I was studying Arabic about eight years ago, I went into uh, a Palestinian liquor store in San Francisco. It was a Palestinian Christian family that owned this liquor store, and I went in to buy something, and I wanted to practice my numbers in Arabic because I was buying something and I needed to know how much money I needed to pay. And I was practicing my numbers, and the guy behind the counter was very, um, I would say, enthusiastic to help me with my numbers. But what he wanted to do was give me his phone number. That was why he was so interested uh -huh. in giving me his number, helping me with numbers. And a friend of mine recently told me that she's, she really wants to practice her Spanish. And I live here in California where it's very easy to practice Spanish. But she said, when I find men to practice Spanish with, they think I'm flirting with them. But I'm really not. I just want to practice my language. And she said, what do I do? And I said, well, you know, if you think that men are thinking that you're flirting with them, then you try to practice more with women. And if you are speaking to men, you should just tell them ahead of time, look, I'm just learning the language and I'm, you know, I, I'm really enjoying practicing this with you so that you make it clear that, that that's your intention for speaking the language. How about um, you, Fasulia? Do you have any suggestions about or any comments on challenges that women face with languages that men might not have? Um, I, I wouldn't so much differentiate uh, between men and women was in, the, in that case, but I had also some frustrations. Uh, I don't know whether I'm a, I w I'm a woman, but with Turkish, I, tr I tried to speak Turkish in, in Turkish supermarkets. And uh, uh, yes, I always got answers in, in, in German and they were the Turkish uh, shopkeepers, they were irritated. They didn't know why I want to, wanted to speak uh, Turkish and, and uh, they, they couldn't imagine that I was just want, wanting to practice a foreign language. So uh, uh, this was a bit uh, frustrating frustrating experience I had. I, um, I don't know whether it has anything to do with my gender, but uh, uh, maybe it's, it's only that the Turkish people uh, don't really, can, cannot really imagine that they are language learners in, 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 a, in a country where they live. Uh, they live. They're living a lot of Turks in, in Germany, for example. Just to give, it's like Spanish people in the United States. Mm. And um, but um, for, for for the rest, I don't I don't have um, any special negative experience which are uh, have to do something with my gender. And but uh, I think um, 
contacting people and, and, and practicing language, it's on the internet, it's, it's much easier than in real life. I find that interesting because I actually prefer to, you know, practice my languages in real life, but I understand the frustration. If people don't want to speak to you, then obviously you have to find other avenues to practice. How about you, uh, Jenna? Um, yeah, I can't really think of anything in, that's particular to women as far as challenges on learning languages. Um, like, I had never really thought about, like, what you said earlier, Susanna, but that's true. Like, you know, sometimes if you try to practice languages with guys, like, they are wanting to get something more out of it. But, um, you know, as far as, you know, actual difficulties in learning the language itself, I don't really, um, you know, I think women in general face the same kind of challenges that men face. You know, they think that, you know, language learning is too difficult or, you know, they don't have enough time or they're not smart enough or you know, the same kinds of problems that men would have, I think. Okay. What about when we're learning, when children are learning languages, do you think that girls might be more timid about making language mistakes than boys are? How about uh, Fasulia um, or, ja or Jana? Well, Jana? you know, I, yeah, Jana. Um, well, I've worked as an English teacher um, abroad for a few years, and I've taught a lot of kids. And... You know, I personally have never noticed any real differences in between boys and girls as far as, like, one being more timid than the other. Um, now, I've actually found that they're shy kids and talkative kids of both genders, and so, um, yeah, personally, I haven't noticed a difference there. Hmm. How about you? Uh, and I, I, don't, I don't have any... Uh, a personal experience with children in in a in a in a, um, in a class situation because I I don't have children myself and I'm not a teacher. I worked at a school, but I had only the task to do the photocopying, so I, I did not have uh, uh, I, I wasn't uh, allowed to be in the in the language lessons of the school. So I don't know how uh, uh, in, in in a class of thirty pupils uh, they the, the the boys and the girls would would react or would they uh, uh, would they be more active or less active or shy? I, I, I don't I can't say anything from my personal experience on this topic. Okay, I know in my experience of teaching, I have noticed that uh, I've taught both English as a second language and Spanish. I've noticed that boys are more likely to raise their hand or speak out without raising their hand sometimes and say things even if they're speaking with mistakes where the girls were thinking more or pro I could tell that they were processing before they wanted to speak. And I think that that might be, and it's also something similar I see in other classes, whether it's history or science, where the girls are more timid about making mistakes, where the boys will just, just speak you know, what they think is right. And I think in this case, if that is the case with girls, like for example, if there are parents listening and they know that their daughters are very shy about speaking because they think they're gonna make a mistake, that's where you have to bring the fun into language learning and use music and, and karaoke if it has to be that or improvisation or using theater because when people are having fun they're more apt to just have fun and they don't really think that they're studying or they're learning but they are learning in the process and th that's one of the reasons I emphasize obviously so much music and, and the media in, in, in language learning. Um, now there's what we've talked about is that we see that there are many more men on YouTube showing their foreign language knowledge. We see more men in the language, I think, in the language forums. And sometimes there's a competitive aspect between men who are talking about their language abilities or their language learning. And I think that that might um, prevent some women from posting things on the internet because they don't want to deal with this criticism or they don't want to deal with this competitive environment. Um, what do you think that we can do to promote women learning languages and overcome these obstacles of um, this competition on the internet and, and maybe not wanting to present themselves um, publicly? Um, maybe I, I I have a, a YouTube channel now for two years. I started in 2009 with my YouTube channel, mm -hmm. and I've have never seen it as a competition. I always say I, I have contacts with other polyglots and language learners via the internet via Skype, 
and and we always uh, interchange our experiences and uh, uh, give uh, give us uh, uh, supportive uh, things for our language projects and it's it's a kind of networking more under people who are uh, in the internet present and and on on public and uh, I don't think that the, the 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 idea of competition is important or. Uh, it, it, it's more a kind of if you are on the internet and people can contact you, you get more um, contacts with other language learners, especially with polyglots, because they aren't so easy to find in your own city. There, there aren't uh, polyglots running on the street. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> therefore, uh, the internet gives you the, the possibility to to make contacts with people, and 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 I think that this is a. a an advantage, and you don't you don't uh, have to fear uh, that that they are always uh, comparing uh, yourself with somebody else. Also, it 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 isn't done that way. I, uh, in my exper own experience, that that's excellent. That you really see it as collaboration rather than competition. That's great. How about you? Uh, um. Well, it seems to me that the things that people are arguing and competing about are really, you know, they're arguing about which method of language learning is the best, you know, and so the people who are arguing are people who are wanting to promote like a certain method or a certain technique. Mm -hmm. And maybe some of these people are, you know, selling uh, some sort of product um, and trying to make a profit off of their method or whatever. And um, those are the kinds of people that, you know, are arguing. But I think, you know, people like Fasulier and other people who are, you know, just making YouTube videos of themselves speaking languages, um, um, from those kinds of people, I do get the kind of impression that she was talking about, that people are just out there um, trying to encourage each other to learn languages and trying to network um, with other language learners and um, just get that kind of positive feedback. And I think if you don't go looking for the arguments, um, you don't have to get involved in the arguments. That's, those are excellent points that, you know, you can see the arguments out there and you can see the, the, um, the competition about methodology, but if you stay away from that and you really focus on showing your languages, how they benefit you, how they benefit your family, then you are really doing that to promote language learning and helping other people. Those are great points. What do you guys think the world would look like if there were more women who spoke foreign languages and more women who were open about their foreign language knowledge? Um, I think that obviously more women would have more economic opportunities like being able to work abroad and do international business and there would be more women in diplomacy. Like for example, in the United States, our first uh, Secretary of State, female Secretary of State was Madeleine Albright who spoke I think at least five uh, foreign languages. And then we had another Secretary of State who spoke Russian. Um, what, do you, what do you guys think are the benefits that we will see when more women are polyglots? Fasulia? I would differentiate because uh, I I I've, I am in a lot of la I've been in a lot of language courses throughout my my whole life and at university at uh, adult uh, education center and these uh, language courses are always full of females. There, I would say that at least eighty percent of the participants of language courses are. May it be at university, in in the philology section, or uh, at at the the adult night night uh, courses. Um, it, it's the vast majority of language learners in these courses uh, that, that that are females. There are the men in the minority situation. So uh, I I wouldn't I wouldn't. Uh, makes a statement that there are only few people, few few females speaking foreign languages or ha that have language abilities. I think where the females are in the minority position is among the polyglots and not among the, norm the normal ordinary language learners. So, but what would the world look like if there were more women who were polyglots? or who uh, expressed what languages do in their life. Like for example, in the book Babel No More that you and I both read by Michael Arard, he only had one, no, I think one or two living female poly, hyper polyglots who were in the book. Two, the rest two, 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 two. Right. yeah, yeah, two. Helen yes. Abadzi and another woman. And even, you know, he said that he thinks one of the reasons that he couldn't find 
uh, other women is because women may not be so interested in showing or bragging on the internet about how many languages they learn, whereas for some of the men it was like a competition or they really wanted to show themselves. So what would it look like if we saw more female polyglots like us on the internet and being active in the media and talking about what languages do in their lives? I think that would be very inspirative for more that 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 for example that uh, girls that they have more role models, and uh, I think it it would would uh, be a very good uh, development, and I would like to encourage this as a sort of uh, development. Good. Okay. Thank you. And uh, Jenna. Yeah. Um, yeah. I agree that because I think we don't have enough really positive role models for young girls. Um, I think a lot of the people that young girls look up to, you know, they just look up to the people who are pretty or, you know, who, um, you know, they're valuing the wrong kinds of things. And I think if we had more, like, you know, intellectual women or more, like, ambitious women, um, you know, doing things like learning lots of different languages, um, you know, maybe more young girls would be more encouraged to value those kinds of things. Because I think, um, like, women can influence young girls in a way that, in a different way than men do. I think that's a really good point about the role models. And I, I just learned recently from a friend of mine, we were discussing the movie Cleopatra. Um, he was watching the movie uh, with Elizabeth, with Elizabeth Taylor playing Cleopatra. And he said, you know, Cle you know Elizabeth Taylor did not really show who Cleopatra was. And I said, why do you say that? He said, do you know that Cleopatra spoke nine languages? And in the movie, she's, so, she's shown as this seductress, you know, who's seducing Mark mm -hmm. Antony and Julius Caesar. And I think that when people think about Cleopatra, one of the first things that comes to mind is, oh, she was a sexy ruler. She used right. her feminine charm and her beauty to uh, seduce these rulers. I never learned that she spoke nine languages. I had to actually look it up in the oh, internet. Oh, I, I didn't know that either. <laughs> you didn't know that either. So isn't that amazing how... Here yeah. was a powerful, powerful woman, and what do we think about her? We think of her as, as the seductress, not as the person who was able to use her languages she, uh, to rule Egypt. And as a matter of fact, she was the first one in her family, because she was from a Greek family, that learned the native Egyptian language. It wasn't Arabic. It was the language that was spoken in Egypt at the time. Mm -hmm. So she went out of the confines of her family to learn this language. And I think that what you just said, Jenna, about how if women, if more women with, with an intellectual, uh, I would say, intellectual characteristics and, and polyglots mm -hmm. were role models, then maybe these women who are using their brains would be better valued in society. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Um, another question. What advantages do women have with language learning? Are there natural communication skills that women generally have that they can utilize with languages? How about you, Fasulia? What do you think about this? I, I don't think um, a natural communication skills. Um, I, I read sometimes that, that uh, women have better communication skills, but I don't really believe in that so much because they are they're, um, extrovert people, they're introvert people, and uh, uh, I don't, uh, so uh, a, a, a woman can be both. It can, a woman can be introvert, can be shy, can be extrovert, can be mixed introvert or extrovert. So I, I wouldn't say generally that, that um, women are always better communicators uh, because um, it depends on, on the, on the personal um, uh, personal uh, um, uh, adjectives or the personal um, uh, talents. Okay. Thank you. So you think it is really based on the individual? Okay. That's what I say, yes. Okay. Thank you. And uh, Jana? Yeah, I actually tend to agree with that. Um, you know, you do hear a lot of things about how, you know, oh, women are more talkative or women are uh, better at communication or they're more social and things like that. But, um, you know, I personally am 
not like I don't feel like I have that great of communication skills. I'm not like an extremely social person. And I have, you know, so many female friends, you know, who are like more introverted or, you know, who don't um, do so well in social situations. And so I don't know, maybe it's possible that there's a general trend of women uh, being more social than men are. I don't know, but I think ultimately it really comes down to the individual person and, um, you know, everybody has their strengths and weaknesses. So yeah, I agree with what Fasolier said. That's a, thank you. I, you know, Jennifer Wagner of IE Languages sent me some information about some research that was done between, about uh, female and male language learners. And from what she sent, she said that there wasn't any conclusive evidence that one gender had right. any special characteristics with languages than the other. And actually, I, I had a conversation once with a male polyglot, and he said that one of the things that people said to him were, oh, well, you're a guy. You're not going to learn a lot of languages. That's what girls do. Uh, <laughs> wow. It's just the opposite. It's just the opposite, right. So it's good that we're talking about the fact that it's not a gender-based quality that we have with languages. It's really about your own, um, you know, your personal characteristics and, and desire. Yeah. Yeah. How yeah, I think, um, sorry, no, please. <laughs> um, I think, um, you know, the fact that women, you, you see less women out there learning a lot of languages, it's not so much to do with anything with like women's natural ability with languages or anything like that. I think it's problems in, in our society, you know, and of the way like we view women or like the way we treat women in society that's causing the problem. What do you think it is about the way we view women in society that's that's causing women not to be polyglots because as Fasulia mentioned earlier then and I agree that the vast majority of language students are women but when it comes to seeing polyglots we see a lot fewer women than men what do you think is happening there well I think uh, it's oh go ahead yeah it's Yana uh, please speak you <laughs> okay well I think it's it's like um what I was saying earlier you know about how we don't have enough positive role models out there for young girls um, I think that we teach young girls to value the wrong things, you know. We teach them that the important thing is what you look like, you know. And if you, you know, that's how you get praised and you get valued from people is when you look pretty, you know. And, um, you know, I think boys are more encouraged to be ambitious, you know, and they're more encouraged to... Um, you know, accomplish a lot of things because, you know, they can impress people in that way. Um, but for girls, you know, it's different. Um, like when we talk to little girls, we say to them, oh, you know, you look so pretty, like that's such a nice dress you have on. Um, you know, it's just, um, it's just kind of ingrained into the way that we view women as a society, I think. I, I see an, I see another point of view because um, um, I imagine uh, w women in a typical situation they are married they have two three children they do the household they have a job and they are mm -hmm. so tied up with everything uh, and they have to be good at, at everything together and there is no uh, time uh, time um, possibility left to to uh, develop such a um, demanding uh, hobby like be, be becoming a polyglot hmm. actually it's an interesting point you just made Fasolia because Corey um, Heller from Multilingual Living has just started this language challenge for families to learn languages together and one of the things that one of the aims is is that you know if parents especially if mothers are so busy taking care of their kids and as you said uh, getting the house together and possibly also working outside of the home that learning a language is maybe one of the last things on their minds so what she's doing is getting families to learn together so that the parents are working with the kids and that way it's a family activity and it, it falls into, you know, other aspects of family life. Um, all right. Now, how about language choices? Do you think that um, the choices that women and men make about languages may affect what we see out there? For example, it's common to see more, many more women in college French classes than, than men. Um, do you think that maybe women gravitate to languages that may seem to be less useful or kind of more pretty languages or languages that may be not as valuable on the marketplace than um, than men, than what men look for in languages? 
I don't, I, don't, I don't really know because I studied uh, three years at, uh, of Romance languages at university, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't, I wouldn't say uh, I, I studied uh, um, French, Spanish, Italian there, and I wouldn't say that these languages are per se in, in living in Europe that these languages are useless or not so much useful. I wouldn't say that, but uh, of course our uh, university classes were full of females. But um, uh, I don't know, uh, I, I can't say it for uh, Mandarin is such a hype now, and I can't say uh, if many uh, young females, if they now study Mandarin, I don't know, because I, I'm not involved in this, this special language now. I see. And, 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 and I can't estimate, I can only uh, tell about my experiences with the languages I study myself and, and the Asiatic languages I don't, I don't study and I have no intentions to, to go in that direction. Okay. How about you, um, Jana, because you studied both Chinese and Jap Japanese. Right. Like Taiwan and Japan. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think it's it's difficult to make statements about, you know, what women as a whole group of people tend to do, mm -hmm. um, because I think it's, you know, everybody is different. And so um, it's hard to make statements like that. But, um, um, you know, in my experience, like when I learned Japanese and Chinese, um, you know, there were both men and women in my classes. And um, I don't think there was a particular gender imbalance um, I don't know, maybe it's true that some women, you know, I know obviously in Europe, French is a useful language, but maybe for someone growing up in the United States, it's not really so useful. And so, I don't know, maybe it's true that uh, more women tend to study French in the United States. Um, maybe it's also true that more men tend to study a language like German, which is equally as not useful in the United States. Um, I don't really know. Um, but it doesn't seem, I don't know, I guess it, it depends on how we define the word useful as well. You know, does useful mean like you can use it for your career, you know, or does useful mean, um, you know, you can just use it in your personal life or what does useful mean? You know, I think that can mean different things to different people. Yes, for, I would, would add this because uh, not always something turns to be useful what everybody thinks because my most useful language for my, for, for jobs I got uh, was is, is a Dutch language and nobody told me before uh, that uh, if I studied Dutch that it would be a useful language and uh, it, 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 it tended to be more useful for jobs to, to receive jobs than English and that <laughs> nobody would, would have predicted that. So I'm, I'm a bit careful with the word what is really useful. Sometimes right. languages are useful and nobody has thought about it before. I think that's a great point. You know, when I studied Italian in college, I really did it for fun. I had no intentions of ever using it professionally. I just liked the way it sounded and I was studying it. You know, and I got some comments from people about, you know, why don't you go study something more useful like Chinese or Japanese? And I never thought I would ever use... Italian, but I did get a job because I spoke Italian. I used to work in the Italian uh, wine import business in San Francisco, and I had to use Italian because we had winemakers come from Italy, and I sometimes had to translate for them and speak, and I also had uh, Italian restaurants as clients, and I would speak to you know the, Italian, the, the owners in, in Italian. So you're right about how you never know if something is going to be uh, beneficial for you financially in the future. You know, I have a question about Japanese, and I've, I've only been to Japan as a tourist. Okay. And I have a friend of mine who uh, grew up in Japan. She's American. And she uh, ended up working in Japan, and she speaks the language fluently. And she said it was very difficult to work there. She's an engineer because she was the only woman in, like, the entire engineering team. And oh. It, it, she didn't feel, and she said that, you know, men, American men who were in Japan, they had a much easier time living in Japan because they could much easier find a girlfriend or a wife, but American women, uh, especially as educated as she was and working as an engineer, she said no guy in her department would ever socialize with her outside of work. 
And so it was very, I, it was very alienating for her to live in that culture, even though she spoke, spoke the language fluently. She was, you know, spoke it like a native. She grew up there. So um, do you think that maybe some women, that the, the culture of the country and the difficulty for women living in the cult country may uh, detract females from learning that language or developing native fluent or developing fluency in the language and working there and showing how they know the language because they they may not feel comfortable working in that country. Um, well, that's a really interesting question. Um, but it, first of all, it sounds like your friend was in a really different situation from my situation. Yeah. Um, she was an engineer, and you know, I've never worked in like a male-dominated field like engineering or computer science or something. Um, you know, I worked as an English teacher, and so um, of course my coworkers uh, were a pretty equal balance of male and female. Okay. And so um, it was pretty different for me. And, um, you know, I never really, like, had a problem making friends with Japanese people. I even had a Japanese boyfriend for a while. So um, it's true that um, the way that people socialize in Japan is culturally very different. Um, you know, if you're not, like, used to that and if you don't, like, understand uh, the way that they socialize, you might feel that, like... Um, you're being ostracized or they're not reaching out to you. Um, it's just that there's a different dynamic there. And um, so it might be difficult for someone to get used to, you know, if they grew up in the West. Mm -hmm. um, there's definitely a cultural barrier there um, that can be difficult. Um, yeah, I think it, it kind of depends on your personality maybe you know I think that there are different cultures that will resonate differently with different people mm -hmm. because I think um, you know cultures vary kind of like personalities vary and some people feel more comfortable in one culture than another um, I personally was born and raised in the United States but I feel like personality wise I'm a lot more Japanese than American and I actually feel more comfortable in Japan than I did in the United States and so um, Maybe that just depends on the person. Mm -hmm. I think I really like the word you used, resonate, because I think that languages can resonate with you, like you said, uh, based on your personality and your ways of communicating. But mm -hmm. also, they resonate with you um, on a vibrational level, because you know all languages are sound, and sounds are vibrations. And the sounds of some languages resonate better with you than the sounds of other languages, which also can make it difficult to learn a language that you don't like to listen to. Um, mm -hmm. And I've been in that situation. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think so. Some languages just naturally appeal to you more for some reason. Yeah, I think for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, what do you think, do you guys have any uh, last thoughts about what we can what we can do to encourage more women to show their language skills or anything else you want to talk about on this topic of women and languages international women's day Fasulia do you have any last thoughts uh, last thoughts I found it, I, I really much enjoyed our conversation mm -hmm. together and uh, we we spoke so uh, many interesting aspects of language learning, the role of females and what are our own experiences and uh, I think um, this is this is really good that we want we, we, we came together to, 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 to have this talk because otherwise there's one female and there's one female and uh, there, there are not so much uh, connections among each other. That's very true. That's very true. You're right. Um, and and Jana? Jana? Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, I also really enjoyed the conversation, and um, it's gotten me to, to think about uh, some issues and some ways that I never thought about them before, and so I hope that people will listen to it and also think about the issues, and if there are more women out there who are learning languages or interested in learning languages, um, I hope that they will you know, try to network with us um, so that we can hear from them too. Excellent, and that was a great point you made about networking. So 
Uh, all of our contact information is on the screen in this YouTube video and it's also in the description in the YouTube video. And if you have any comments or any other suggestions that you have about how to promote language learning you know, to the audience, please uh, put that in the, your YouTube comments. And so something I was thinking about, about maybe somebody who doesn't want to make a YouTube video or really be too public about what they're doing, you could also write a blog about your language learning or about how you use your languages to get jobs. Because, you know, you don't have to make a video, but if you talk about it and you write about it, you may be inspiring other women and also men to learn languages. Mm -hmm. And I think... Um, you know, or you can make a YouTube video and turn off the comments if you don't want to deal with people's comments or have a name on the internet that's not your real name so people don't, you know, won't find you if they do a Google search. So you have some sort of anonymity and um, that can help. And, you know, something I wanted to mention is that I think that one of the main, one of a huge, a huge point about women in language learning is that I think there's a multiplier effect that if a woman learns a language. Now, I don't have children, but if a woman has a child, if she's speaking, you know, her second or third language with the child from a young from a young age, the child is more apt to actually learn that language or at least be familiar with the sounds of that language. So when he or she is in school later on and has the opportunity to learn to study the language, he or she will already have the exposure to the sounds of the language, and that's very important to, for developing accents. And if a man speaks various languages, his children may end up learning those languages, but just because of the way our society works, women spend a lot more time raising children than men do. And so there is this multiplier effect about educating women, and that's one of the things I really want to emphasize for women who may be a little bit shy, perhaps, about um, showing their language skills. If you don't want to show them online, you don't want to write about it, and you have children, think about the impact you can have on your children. And when your children learn languages, then their children will be learning languages and their friends will hear the languages. And so you're creating a huge domino effect uh, to, about language learning that you should really value. All right, well, any other thoughts before we wrap up? Thank you guys so much for uh, taking this time to to speak and to uh, really think about this topic because maybe we can have more phone calls in the future and, and put them on YouTube to encourage women, female language learners. Any last thoughts before we finish? Uh, yes, I w would greet all the, the watchers of the video and um, perhaps uh, we, we, we will, we're looking forward to some uh, reactions and um, we w would like to um, discuss with other people who watch our video and uh, who see our arguments and experiences. Perhaps they have something uh, interesting for us to add. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, I just uh, second that. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for watching the video. I don't really have much to add, but um, I hope that it's helpful to people. Excellent. So. Thank you.